so I want to do a quick video showing you one of the upgrades we're making to Bad Marrow this year. So as some of you may have seen when we were getting ready for drag week last year, I had actually hurt my motor at Woodward, which was about two or three weeks prior to drag week. So um, I hurt my crank and I spun um, a bearing and I took out two rods in the process of all this. So. Um, we did get it back together for drag week, but um, having such short notice, we didn't have time to have the crank properly repaired, so our only option was to have it ground. Um, they ended up not getting it all the way cleaned up. We didn't know that, though, until after drag week. So fast forward to sometime in late November, we pulled the pan and checked the bearings just to see how everything looked so we could kind of decide what we were going to do for this upcoming season, and we found that seven and eight bearings number seven and eight they um, were showing signs of wear again we looked at the crank and we noticed that there was heat fractures on the crank which I'm going to show you in just a minute um, there's actually a couple chunks out of the crank <laughs> missing so um, we the bearings were beginning to wear we were getting ready to have a repeat of what we had um, previously that caused this but it was just going to be just a different culprit so um, we had a couple options. We could get a new crank, one, or that's an expensive option usually, and two, um, we could send mine back to be repaired. So have it re um, like actually welded again, like properly repaired. So have it welded, ground, and then re-nitrited. But um, the place we were going to send it to, which Dad actually just sent his to, they did a great job. It's just they're backed up quite a way. So time-wise, it wasn't looking good for us to do that option. So we actually got a new crank from Dart. So I'm gonna show you guys a little bit about it because it's actually going to be um, an upgrade from what I had before. So I'm gonna show you one when we switched, what my crank looks like now, um, and then two, the new crank, and then three, kind of the, the differences. So getting ready to show that. Okay, so quick comparison. So this is the current crank that I have been running in Bad Marrow for the past three years. It was actually in this engine combination from the beginning. So um, current piece and then my new piece. So first of all, let's start with why we're having to make changes. So that's going to be in the number seven and eight journal. But first, let me say this piece has been through all kinds of issues and it has lived and survived and we haven't had any issues it's just we finally finally heard it so um, and this time it would require major repair so it's a little bit hard to see so I'm going to overlay a picture but right in this area right here there's tiny little heat fractures which caused bearing wear um, and we were getting ready to have like I said a repeat of what happened originally but you can at least see the pieces of metal that are missing so um, we could have this fixed. We could send it off and have it um, welded and ground and re-nitrided and it would be as good as new. It's just that the place we want to send it to, they're weeks and weeks out and we just don't have the time right now. So eventually it will get repaired and put on the shelf and it will be, there's a great spare. But here is my new Dart um, Billet Center Counterweighted LS Crank. So we're really excited about this piece. So as you can see on this stock style LS crank, we do not have center counterweights. On my new billet dart crank, we do. So let's go over here for another quick comparison. Just because this LS crank doesn't have center counterweights doesn't mean it's a bad piece. It just means that this is gonna be an upgrade and good for the power that we're gonna be making in Bad Marrow. These are big block Chevy cranks. This is another stock style um, big block Chevy crank. So right here, even in this, you can see that it doesn't have center counterweights. But over here on this crank, we do have center counterweights. So um, this is a crank that came out of dad's 55 Chevy that's actually getting ready to go in the build for the COE. So it's gonna have a 520 cubic inch big block in this. This is gonna be a really fun truck and I'll update on that build later. But anyways, <laughs> This crank is going in that. So um, I say that to say this. So this is really good for um, when you start to get into higher RPM range, you get into higher boot, you get into boost range, you start making more power. Um, when you get into those areas, you start to get crank flex. And when that happens, um, it puts load on the outside of the bearings and you get really weird wear patterns, which is actually what was happening with my current setup so every time we take it apart we would have very very odd patterns 
Um, you can actually see it here. This is my main cap with a bearing in it. So as you can see, you can see the load that's put on the outer edges of the bearings. Every time we take it apart, we have these, these patterns. So we're really excited about this new crank. So hopefully we can clean up that wear and have it run more even um, and avoid that crank flex from outside, to, you know, on the outer edges of, of the bearings. So like I said, still a great piece, still a great piece. It's just that these center counterweighted options are really great for the power that we're going to be trying to make with bad marrow. Um, so that's really exciting. I'm actually going to have dad come back though and show us um, what he had to do this morning so that we can run the center counterweighted crank. So on stock LS blocks, um, even on this GM LSX block, you don't have the ability to run the center counterweight um, with the block as it comes, so to say. So right here on this, you would have a clearance issue with that center counterweight. So it would actually hit here. So dad this morning spent a couple hours clearancing the block so that we can run that. So he's actually going to come back, show us um, how he did it, where he took the material away, and what tools he used. So it was a fairly easy process um, when he got it all figured out what he was going to use. Um, so he's going to come back and show us that. We're excited. We're getting ready to take the crank and the block to Mike Henson. He's going to fix a couple other things on the block for us. We're going to bush the lifters, uh, lifter bores, and he's going to balance the crank. And we're going to get totally ready for a full season in Bad Marrow so we can just go back to back on races and hopefully not have any issues. Okay, so dad has spent a couple hours this morning and yesterday he spent a little bit of time on clearancing the block for the center counterweighted crank. So he's going to show us, one, the tools he used, two, where he clearanced, and three, kind of just the process that he went through. So tell us. On a LSX block or a stock GM block, like just a LS1 or LS3, this right here is, you know, these match now. They don't, on a stock block, they're this piece of steel comes way out here and it, it goes all the way down and comes back up here. It just makes the center web more bulky and strong, or at least I guess that's their theory. All the others are thin enough that the counterweighted crank works, but on this one, because of the bulk here, the, crank, the counterweights won't clear. That's why none of them have a center counterweighted crank. It's not necessary for 1,000 horsepower or less, but when you're making you know, close to 2,000 horsepower, that crank can flex without the extra counterbalances in the middle. So, how did you do it? There's lots of ways to do it. You could use die grinders with carbide bits, or you could use a milling machine, but it's, it's quite a process with a mill. You'd actually have to make the bit go down, back up, you know, take it off. It, it's just be a lengthy process, a lot of setup. So, I thought about this. This is just a this, I like this because it's a little slower speed. It's not like an electric one. And I just came in and very carefully cut a path all the way around. Then I literally broke, with a screwdriver, broke the thin piece of metal off that was left and then used a die grinder with a wheel similar to this to just clean it up. So now this is literally the same as this and the crank clears perfectly. So as you can see right here, um, can you just point out the area so well, with actually, your finger so that way they can show right there. This right here, as you see over here, look at this side. This is cut way down. This was, it had metal way up here and the counterweight would hit down here. So I cut it out similar to the one behind here where the chunk's out of it. I went down far enough that I knew there wouldn't be a chunk in there and then all the way through here. So there was just a piece of steel cast into this block. Right. All the way around there. So just in case you're wondering, it doesn't weaken it in any way. We talked with Steve from Dart, um, and that is exactly what he told you to do. Um, said that it wouldn't be a problem with block strength or anything like that. So Dart that is- Dart does the same thing to their blocks if you order one for a counterweight. They cast that piece in there because that's just kind of the way they've all been made since the very first LSs. But if you order a dart block for a counterweighted crank, they literally just machine that out while they're machining all the 
rest of the stuff on the block. So, the no issues um, if you happen to need to do this to your own. Um, not an issue to worry about strength-wise. So, no, now... Not a issue. It's just, and the best way to do it, if you're going to do it at home, is to use that cutoff wheel. That's, that seems to work the best. So, a couple hours. So, now we're going from this with no counterweight. You can really see it from that angle to this. So, Bad Marrow, getting an upgrade take this to Henson um, and get it ready to go for a full season in Bad Marrow. Okay, so that's my quick little update. Um, I hope you guys found it helpful. Uh, maybe a good comparison. Maybe if you're going to be running a counterweighted crank in your LS build and you need to learn how to clearance your block, maybe that will be helpful for you. So if you guys have questions, put them in the comments and I can try to help there as well. But um, we're really excited for Bad Marrow this season. Uh, I am getting signed up for races. February is when we're signing up for race week and rag week um, and Midwest drag. So we are going to have a full season this year. And so we really are looking forward to hopefully having no issues and just making races back to back. So it's going to be fun. So stay tuned. Stay tuned for more updates as we progress. Um, and then stay tuned for some updates on this cab over build because that's going to be a really, really fun truck. But thank you guys for watching. And as always, be happy, go fast, and stay pretty. I will see you guys next time.